All right, in this video, we're going to talk about point-slope form of a line, which is uh, one of several forms of a line, and it's a very convenient one. So the first thing we need to know is, uh, what is point-slope form? So uh, the formula looks like this. We have y minus, so that y is always going to be in the equation of the line that we end up with. And now the next thing we write is something we're going to substitute for, so y sub 0. And then equals another thing we're going to substitute for, which is m, the slope of the line. And then uh, I'm going to open parentheses. When you uh, are reading math and you see parentheses, you usually say the quantity. So it's m times the quantity x minus. So that x right there is going to be in the formula when we're done. Uh, it doesn't get substituted for. And then we're going to subtract from that x sub 0. So to read it, it's y minus y sub 0 equals m, the quantity, x minus x sub 0. And then... Uh, the point x0, y0 is some point that we know on the line, uh, and there's a lot of ways that we could know a point. Maybe it's given, maybe you have a graph, whatever. And then m is the slope of the line, which, again, might be given, or we might need to calculate it. Uh, to calculate slope, uh, we can use a formula you're probably familiar with. So we have uh, two ordered pairs. So usually we call them x1, y1, and x2, y2, and I'm kind of color coding them here to maybe make this a little easier to remember. So m is equal to, and it's change in y over change in x, uh, but you have to be consistent. So uh, the first time I write the slope, I'm going to start with y2. So y2 minus y1, so that's my change in y. And notice I started with the orange point first, or y2. So now in the bottom, I have to start with the orange point first. So it's going to be x2 minus x1. So y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Honestly, that's the way I always calculate slope. If I have two points, I always start with a point that's just written on the right. Um, and it's just easier for me to remember that way. It's consistent. I don't have to think very much, so it's a good deal. Uh, alternatively, you actually get the same answer as long as you're consistent. So a second way of doing it would be y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2. And you'll notice that uh, I don't really know what color that is, but we start with that very dark colored point. Um, and then the second point is the orange point. Uh, so as long as you're consistent, you're going to get the same answer. So it doesn't really matter which way you calculate it. You get to pick. I always start with the rightmost point first. I don't know why. Um, let's do an example. So we want to find the equation of the line that passes through the points 8, negative 3, and 4, 7. So first thing I need is slope because uh, I already have two different points. So I could actually write the equation two different ways. Um, but I don't have the slope, so I'm going to calculate that. So m is equal to... And then I always start with the rightmost point. So I'm going to start with 7 minus, and then uh, if there's a minus sign and then a negative number, I always put it in parentheses. So the quantity negative 3, so 7 minus the quantity negative 3, that's changing y, over, and now be consistent. We started with the 7, so we have to put the x coordinate that goes with 7. So it's going to be 4 minus, and then 8. And then here, 7 minus negative 3 is positive 10. That's 7 minus negative 3 is 7 plus 3, so 10. And then 4 minus 8 is negative 4. Um, but then both of those have a 2 in them, so I'm going to simplify that to negative 5 halves. So that's my slope. That's m, so I'll be substituting that in. Um, and now uh, I need to remember point slope form. So that's y minus y0 equals m times the quantity x minus x0. And I can choose either of the two points and use them and use it as x0, y0. So... The first way I'm going to do it is to use the point 8, negative 3. So it's going to be y minus. That's just a part of the formula. And now I have to replace y0 with uh, negative 3. So the y coordinate of my point equals m, which I calculated, the quantity x minus, and then replace x0 with 8. Like that. Uh, this is messy. You never want to leave something with a minus and negative in it. So I'm going to rewrite it as y plus 3 is negative 5 halves and then x minus 8. Um, but I could have used the other point. So maybe I would rather use uh, 4, 7, which actually uh, I think a lot of people would rather use because it doesn't have a negative coordinate. Kind of make your life a little easier and not having to deal with a minus a negative. So let's substitute in. So y minus the y coordinate, which is 7, equals the slope times the quantity x minus the x coordinate of my point. Like that. And there's nothing to really simplify there, so I'll box it. Uh, so we have two different forms of a line, but how do we really know that they're the same? Well, it turns out that uh, we can show they're equivalent, so I'm going to do that for you. So I'm going to start with uh, the first line, and I'm just going to simplify this. So what I'm actually going to do is solve for y. 
So y plus 3 equals, uh, I'm going to distribute negative 5 halves. So first it goes to x, so that's negative 5 halves times x, which is just negative 5 halves x. And then it goes to negative 8, so I'm going to write minus 8 times the quantity negative 5 halves. So that's y plus 3 equals negative 5 halves x. And then negative 8 times negative 5 halves, that's like negative 8 over 1 times negative 5 over 2. Multiply across the top, that's positive 40 over 2. And from there, we can probably simplify without a problem. And I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. So I get this uh, as an equivalent form. So this is a third equivalent form. And now I'll just do that to the other line, and we'll see that they're the same. So we have this. You'll notice it's the same procedure. So uh, I'm going to distribute the slope. So first to the x, which gives me negative 5 halves x. And then I'm going to distribute the slope to negative 4. So I'm going to write minus 4 times the quantity negative 5 halves. And then this, and then negative 4 times negative 5 halves is multiply across the top, you get positive 20 over 2. So plus 20 over 2. And from here, you can almost certainly finish, and add 7 to both sides in this case. Uh, so I get this, and if you look at those, they're actually the same. So we got equivalent forms. Point slope form is very fast to use, which is why we like it. Um, it's also very convenient because as long as you know a point and you know the slope, you're done. You don't have to uh, go through this process, which sometimes is messy, uh, showing that two things are equivalent. Anyway, I hope this was helpful and uh, good luck.